And I thank you so much, so, so, so very much for coming to the first holiday Sunday. And I want to very much thank my sponsors. And if uh, Senator Royce West could come on this way. Uh, our Congresswoman does have an appointment. And I'm so gracious that she says she would come. So we can give her this small presentation and thanking her for all of her great 40 years of work to Dallas County. I just thank all the ones that showed up. I thought my house was empty. But I thank you, thank you, and enjoy. Let me just tell a small story about a young lady from someplace called Waco, Texas, who uh, worked at the VA hospital. She became a state representative, state senator, congressperson. You know, I had the pleasure of meeting Congresswoman Ada Bernice Johnson when I was a student at the University of Texas at Arlington. And at that time, I was getting involved in politics and ended up becoming the president of the student body. So we've been knowing each other for a long, long time. And she still has a long way to go. But tonight, the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats, Congresswoman Johnson, wants to make certain that we recognize your service. And so if I can read these 10 pages of notes. <laughs> Presented to you, the Honorable Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, the gentlewoman from Texas. Let me say that again. Woo! The gentlewoman from Woo! Texas. Woo! We know that you get a lot of accolades, but hopefully this particular flag <laughs> will be one of them that you continue to, to display. Your three decades of dedicated representation of the 30th Congressional District in the United States and a decade of service in the Texas Legislature as a member of both the Texas Senate and House of Representatives. You have served with distinction, possessors of courage, integrity, integrity, and compassion, a fighter for the people of the state of Texas. Congressman Johnson, thank you on behalf of the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats, Dallas County, December 17, 2021. Let me uh, thank you and first let me say good evening. I don't have much of a voice because I've been talking all day. This is our annual staff retreat week. And tonight is our night that we go out and have dinner together and exchange gifts. So that's where we're headed. I want to express my appreciation for this thoughtful recognition. And I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the Coalition of Black Democrats. Back in 1974, in the Texas House, I realized that we needed a network of people around the state because there were many people that should have been standing with us and had lots of us in their districts that did not. And so I went to the Democratic headquarters and got the list of African American delegates to the state convention. And then I got the list of memberships of NAACP and ministers, and I called a meeting in Washington, I mean in Austin, and we started what we call the Texas Black Caucus. And when I left to go to the Carter administration, I called Daryl and Davis from Fort Worth, who had been my regional director of my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, and I said, we need some mixture. So I'd like you to take my spot and take this organization. But well, one of the people that was writing the, uh, the uh, bylaws had got Reed out of Alabama, who was a well-known political operative in Alabama, was a lawyer in Fort Worth. And so she said, I don't work with him very well. I said, you'll get used to it. 
So we had a meeting at my sister's house, and she <coughs> suggested changing the name to the Coalition of Black Democrats so that it wouldn't look like it was the same group and she could get rid of it. That's what we did in my book, which I'm working on. But that's the history of the Coalition of Black Democrats. Uh, and I'm, I hope it did take a turn that I didn't care much for when they start shaking out candidates for money. But I hope we're back on the right road now so that we are looking at the quality of the candidate rather than how much they can pay. And so I want to challenge the Coalition of Black Democrats to get back to the original intent I think you have with new leadership and want to thank you very much. Now, in terms of, what did you say you wanted me to talk about? Anything you want to. No, somebody sent a note to the office. I just, I don't want to sit here. I don't want to stand here and keep talking. And no, talk. you're okay, because I didn't send it. I don't know who sent it. Okay. Well, my office had a topic on what you wanted me to talk about. Oh, okay. And so I said, well, okay, it'll, it'll come up and come out. But I won't, I won't keep you uh, long, but I want to thank you for the support that I've received over the years. Uh, when they say I drew District 30, that was that I did the first one, but that's the last time it looked that way too. Sure. <laughs> I, I have been from the city limits of Fort Worth to the city limits of McKinney, and all in between. I the, I am now serving in the seventh configuration of District 30. Yeah. It's very diverse, and the new District 30 coming up has a larger percentage of African Americans than we've ever had in it before, and I think it's 51%. But what I did do in doing that, when I went out to Richardson, the Carrollton area, Plano, I organized those Asians, and that's who turned the county blue. We walked in 2006, you remember that, Roy, because you promised me you're gonna start at Tarrant County, we're gonna start at Collin County, but we meet, we know, We've covered everything. When we got, when we looked up, we got the tarot cards, so we never to see his group. Yep. <laughs> but it turned this county blue. And when you look at the numbers, I study numbers and I study the bottom. When you look at the numbers, that's what keeps us blue. It is at Richardson, Garland, and north of um, Highland Park, where you have a terrific number of Asians. They are Indian, they are Pakistanian, they are Korean, and Chinese. A few Turkish. But I give them my list and they follow through. <laughs> None of them can vote for me now. But I did organize that first chamber of commerce and celebrated that 34th anniversary of 35th last year. Now they got a lot of chambers, but it was all one when I organized back in the 80s. And so, we have a very rich population that if they vote and when they vote, we should be voting very high quality candidates to victory. You can't vote for everybody. Everybody's not quite qualified. But take your choices and make sure that the good people get elected so that we can have good representation, whatever level we serve. I always say that I'm not interested in supporting anybody who's running for a title. I like to support people who are running to do a job. Titles are one thing, doing the work is another. That's right. And so, I hope that all of you who are candidates, that you're looking at the responsibilities of the job rather than the title and the check. And then we can be proud when we put you in office. But I'm not ashamed to say that I can't support you if I can't. Uh, I believe in being upfront. I don't want to mislead anybody. And so I want to wish you a great holidays and great success uh, for coming election in the coming year. And we are in a real serious situation in Washington. And I really don't know when we'll get out of it. 
but we can stand some we can stand some prayers and hopefully we will send people there with good reasoning ability and the ability to want to get something done and I have chosen the person I'd like to replace me based upon the youth the preparation and the work ethic I recruited her because I want somebody young female and, and bright that will work to follow me because I have worked the whole time I was in public office and I want somebody to follow me who will work. Thank you. I want to bring up uh, Foncia Hill. And she's going to talk a little bit about this fabulous building that is an African American edifice. Um, here you go, sister. <laughs> Good evening, beloved. In 1974, Dr. Harry Robinson Jr. had a dream in a box. And that dream was a museum, a place that would preserve African American history. That dream is where you are standing. On November 14, 1993, this building was dedicated. It has an African motif, it has rotating exhibits and permanent exhibits. I am privileged to serve as chair of the board of trustees of the African American Museum. I welcome you here today and I invite you to come often. Come for the exhibits, come for the fellowship, come because it is your history. No one else is coming for us but us. If we do not preserve what is ours, it will be lost or the atrocities of the past will be repeated. I welcome you. I invite you to come again. I invite you to take out a membership. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the evening. Enjoy your holiday. My name is uh, Brent. Actually, come on, Judge. Come on, Judge. Come on. You did it. You did it. So my name is Brandon Bent. I served as Vice President of the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats when we restarted the chapter in 2016. And I had the privilege and the honor of serving as Vice President with Dr. Frederick Lewis, who's in here somewhere, under the auspices of President Audrey Moorhead. Now, Judge, the Honorable Audrey Moorhead. Um, and I will hand off the mic so you can say some words while we wait for Beatrice to get over here. Well, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Ho, ho, ho. And ho some more. Feliz Navidad. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to bring you greetings on behalf of all of the members of the judiciary and all of the elected officials. I was. Okay, if you are an elected official, if you will please come and stand to my left. Left. Elected officials. Elected officials, not candidates. Elected. Elected. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the people who have committed themselves for service and sacrifice on your behalf. I hope that you will support your candidates and your incumbents as you so see fit. But these are the people who get up every day, who serve. Serve for the purpose of giving back to this community. Not to be successful, but to be significant. It has been my pleasure to serve as the first woman to be judge of Dallas County Criminal Court Number 3 because of organizations like this and because of active voters and community-involved individuals like yourself. It's my honor to be here, and I'm going to ask the elected officials to my left to please introduce themselves and tell you their office and limit their remarks. 
Yeah, 45 seconds, because they're going to round up. I already know. <laughs> they're going to round up. And I'm going to start with my cousin Mary, the sheriff of our county, Sheriff Mary Brown. Woo-hoo! Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. Glad to be here tonight. My name is Marion Brown. I am your Dallas County Sheriff. So I hope that you'll keep that in mind. And thankfully, I am not uh, having to run this time because I had to run four elections in a two and a half year period just to get here. So we're thankful that we're not on the ballot this go round, but we will be when it is appropriate. Amen. Glad to see everybody tonight. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Good evening. I'm Judge Valencia Nash, Justice of the Peace for Precinct 1, Place 2. Right where you are, this is Precinct 1. Uh, glad to be serving you for the last 15 years, and it's my pleasure. Thank you. And I'm Judge Sally Montgomery, County Court of Law Number 3. I think this is my 10th election. Um, I'm coming up, I'm opposed again. And I was the first countywide elected Democrat way back in 02. So it's my pleasure to be here. My honor. My name is Juan Hasso, and just the Peace Precinct 5, Place 2. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have served the people of Dallas County this past few years. Uh, many blessings, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa as well. And I'm in awe of all the judges in Dallas County because they, as the Congresswoman said, it's not the title, it's the job. And each one of these judges go in every day and do the work, the necessary work that needs to be done so justice will prevail in Dallas County. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Juan Renteria. I am your current judge for county court at law number five. I was appointed by the county commissioner's court to succeed Judge Greenberg. I can tell each and every one of you it has been an honor and a pleasure to serve uh, this great county. I ask that you consider me during the vote. It's voteforwan.com is my email address. I want to wish everyone here a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a new year because we're going to be successful in 2022. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amber Gibbons, and I serve you as the judge of the 282nd Judicial District Court here in Dallas County, Texas. As Ms. Hill said, we have a lot to be grateful for, and I, I'm proud that I was able to create our first anti-discrimination policy in the country as it relates to people's rights to have attorneys that believe that all people have a right to a criminal defense. Again, my name is Amber Givens, and I serve you as the 282nd Judicial District Court's judge. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Givens. Uh, good evening, everyone, and happy holidays to you. I'm Keisha Williams Lankford. I am a trustee and secretary of the board of Cedar Hill ISD. Uh, I am so proud to be a Longhorn, uh, but I also stand here as a native of Dallas and your candidate for District 30. Thank you. Good evening. Some of you may know me. My name is Nancy Mulder. I'm currently your judge in County Criminal Court number four. Uh, one of our felony court judges is retiring, so I am hoping to move up to her bench and I hope you will vote for me, Nancy Mulder, for Criminal District Court number six. In 2017, I created the Site and Release Court in the city of Dallas to end uh, misdemeanor marijuana arrests. Uh, for our over, thank you, thank you, Jasmine, for our uh, over police areas. Well, oh, this is a really big issue. And unfortunately, the numbers since 2017 have been that 91% of the people who are cited and released for possession of marijuana in the city of Dallas, 91% are people of color. I cannot get an answer from the police chief about what we're going to do, but we're working on it. Thank you very much. My name is Bill Peterson. I serve on the 5th District Court of Appeals. I was part of a group of eight Democrats who in 2018 took the court from 13 Republicans 
all Republicans for 20 years to now de Democratic dominance, to borrow a phrase from Ken Mulvey. We've got two more that are, that, three more that have just joined us and two more are going to join us soon. We've turned the Dallas Court of Appeals from all Republican for 20 years to, with your help, very soon, all Democrats. Happy holidays. I'm uh, Judge David Lopez. I'm in the uh, 256 court, and I was in the uh, sweep of 2006 that came in, and everybody thought the county was in trouble because all the Republicans are moving out and all the Democrats are coming in, and what's going to happen now? But I'll tell you that Democrats have done a great job at the D Dallas County Courthouse. I continue to do as best I can representing Democrats in, in the courthouse. And I'm asking you to uh, to reelect me to uh, the 256 Family Court. Thank you very much. God bless y'all. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Hector Garza. I'm currently the uh, judge in the 195th Judicial District Court here in Dallas County. Native Dallas from Dallas. I was born and raised. I grew up in Oak Cliff. I uh, first month family graduated high school and go to college. So I know a little bit about you know when the police officers pull up behind you and they're tailing you. So I know how to know the feelings that go behind that. So one of the reasons why I decided to go into law and go to law school and become a lawyer and, and, and hopefully I'm making a difference. I also volunteer my time in, in the DeBerg Court as the presiding judge of the DeBerg Court, which is a drug rehab program. So uh, thank you. Thank you Again, current elected officials, current elected officials, make your way around. Current elected officials and then we'll do candidates. Good evening, everyone. I'm Judge Julia Hayes of County Criminal Court Number Two, which is a misdemeanor criminal court. Ten years ago, you all elected me. Actually, 11 years ago, and I ran on a campaign of justice. I ran on a campaign of justice, fairness, and purpose, and I continue to do that. I assure you that things are going just great at County Criminal Court Number Two. I do not have an opponent, so I'm going to thank you eternally for continuing to support me. Thank you all. Julia Hayes. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I can't hear y'all. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. I am Raquel Rocky Jones. I am the presiding judge of the 203rd Judicial District Court, and I want to say thank you so much for all the support you gave me what is this, four years ago, right? Yes. And so I want to thank you for that support. I've been able to do a lot of good work, and I want to continue that work with your help and by being out in the community. So thank you so much. Remember, Raquel Rocky Jones. Thank you. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Avery Warren, and I'm the presiding judge of probate court number two. I know you have a lot of speeches to listen to tonight. I want to let you know that I wish you all a very happy holiday. I hope that you have a memorable time, and remember to make sure that you protect yourself and your family. Uh, probate court is the court that handles the affairs of the deceased, and we have been incredibly busy, as you would imagine. But we are here to serve you, and we thank you for the opportunity. Happy holidays, Avery Warren. Hey, good evening. How you doing? All right, this is I'm Judge Mike Jones. Serious about it. I'm the current presiding judge. Yeah, you can put the DJ on that, like anyway. I'm the current Judge of the Peace, Precinct Four Place One. I'm actually one for re-election to keep our criminal justice system moving in a positive way. We're making positive impacts, and I would like for you to go ahead and re vote re-elect Judge Mike Jones. All right. Go to judgemikejones.com. You have a blessing, all right? All right. Any other elected officials, I want to make sure that I take time and make sure I bring up my state representative, the amazing Jasmine Crockett. The Congresswoman spoke earlier and she talked about who she wanted and who she was endorsing for her um, to succeed her. And she didn't name names, but it is public. And it's this amazing woman, Miss Jasmine Crock. Thank you so much. I just want to say hello, happy holidays. And thank you so much for all of your support. It was a really tough year down in Austin. If you've been watching any news, um, you've seen how tough it was for us. And the fight continues. We know that we can't get what we need in Austin right now. We don't have the numbers. And sadly enough, they've stacked the deck against us. 
So I am excited that the Congresswoman tapped me um, and thinks that I'm best suited to be the next person, I won't say replace her, but to come behind her in D.C. to continue this fight, a fight that we started right here out of Texas when we went to D.C. to protest against the voter suppression laws. And it seems like we need to protest these terrible maps. And it seems like we also need to protest these repro rights. And so there's so many fights to be continued, but our only relief will be found on the federal, the federal level. So I thank you so much for everyone coming out and supporting this wonderful event. Oh, and my good friend is here, right behind me. So I guess I get to introduce him. But yes, Jasmine Crockett, I will be number four on your ballot for Congressional District 30. Thank you. And now, now I have the esteemed pleasure of introducing my very good friend, who I've known since before he took office. That's none other than our community constable, Bill Gibson. Good evening, good evening. Uh, let's tell you, it's a blessing to be out this holiday season amongst you all. Uh, well, I'm not gonna stand before you long. So I am Bill Gibson. I represent the eastern side of Dallas County, which covers Garland, Mesquite, Raleigh, Saxon, Sunderland, East Dallas. And so I will be on the ballot in 2022. I'm number two for precinct two. And so it seems like that number has always followed me in my life, the number two. So, uh, but I'm number one, uh, right? And so, uh, I think I'm very and so I appreciate your support. Um, 2018, as we work to bridge the gap between the community and law enforcement with things we've seen across our nation, we've seen right here in Dallas County. And so I just ask for your support again um, as we continue to continue to build those gaps and those relationships and that we're able to move forward with uh, uh, becoming more of an integral part of the community. We have been able to do so many things that I can't go down the whole list, but we've been able to build things like our relationship with Garland ISD with our intrusion program where we're able to send people into the school and try to make sure that we minimize the threat upon our kids. Uh, we've been able to also um, bring light to the conference office through our national night out. And so those are just a few items. And so I, I just like to say, just like for your support again in 2022 um, as we continue to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community. And so with that being said, happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everyone, enjoy the night, and I have my good friend Sarah Martinez, Just a Peace in Precinct 5 next, so here you go, Sarah Martinez. Thank you. Good evening, Democrats. My name is Sarah Martinez. I am your current Justice of the Peace for Precinct 5, Place 1. I will also be in the ballot in 2022. I am seeking my third term. I'm extremely proud of everything we've done at JP51. In light of the pandemic, everyone now realizes the integral part that the Justice of the Peace plays in our community. We are at the forefront of evictions, and I'm proud to say that in collaboration with my other Justice of the Peace, we were able to extend two moratoriums on evictions. We tried for a third, couldn't get there, but we still continue the fight. We're still applying all of the protections to the community every chance we get because we realize that this is, this pandemic is not over yet. Outside of the courtroom, I'm happy to report that I'm part of the Judicial Nominating Commission. I've brought forth candidates for city council that are reflective of our community. I think that's extremely important. I also serve on the Dallas County Bell Bond Board. And that's to make sure that if there's any complaints on Bell Bond companies, that we're able to address those. We need to have equity in criminal justice, and that's a great part of something that we're doing. Um, I also have a great Thank staff. Thank you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because really I want to introduce my sponsors. So, uh, come on. Thank you. All right. Good evening. My name is Nicole Taylor, and I'm a candidate for County Court at Law Number 5. I want you to know that I've practiced law for 22 years. If you want a judge who's compassionate and treats everyone with dignity and respect, make sure to remember to vote for Nicole Taylor. NicoleTaylorForJudge.com. Thank you. Thank you. Sponsors that's coming up right now. I, I know the candidates and all the sponsors. 
Oh, okay, go ahead. Be serious sometimes. Oh, right. yeah. So, I'm Dana Huffman. Uh, I am a presiding judge for six cities in the Metroplex, and I'm a magistrate for Dallas, Denton, and Collin County for over 20 of my 26 years of practice. I will echo what Judge Mulder said because I'm in the jail every morning as I was today and 365 days a year that for our low-level offenses, people of color are disproportionately represented in the jail. I'm in there every morning. It's a true statement. I am running for Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. I will be unopposed. <laughs> be on your ballot in November. Please let me be, trust me to be your foot soldier for justice and watch our criminal process from the floor up to the top. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Maria Aceves and I'm running for the 192nd Civil District Court. This is an open bench and so the judge that was there went up on the Court of Appeals last election cycle. I've only done civil my entire career, and I'm ready to serve from day one. I will bring fairness, competency, and efficiency to this bench if I have the honor of serving the people of Dallas County. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. How are you this evening? Doing well. I am Sandra Street, your candidate for the 256th Family District Court, 22-year practicing family lawyer, proud to be a sustaining member and ongoing member of this chapter, this organization, right here. Thank yeah, you for coming yeah, out. Come on now. Good evening. I'm Monique Bracey Huff, and I'm a candidate for Dallas County Criminal Court Number 10, one of your family violence courts in Dallas County. I ask for your support. I ask for your vote. Justice delayed is justice denied. Please, let's re solve this problem and ask for your vote Valentine's Day. Thank you. Don't forget to go buy some drinks over there. I got a bar over there. They got to get paid. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Andre Turner. I'm a lifelong Democrat. I can, I can pop my collar because I was part of this 2006 wave when Dallas County turned blue. I take pride in that, helping all these candidates who's already who's on that class of 2006. I'm running for Justice of the Peace, Precinct 5, Place 1. I'm number one on the ballot. Dre for Justice. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget the bar is in the corner. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Shelby, and I'm running for the 192nd Civil District Court. I have over 22 years of legal and business and finance experience. I have an MBA from Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. I have years on Wall Street taking co companies from public to private. I have civil litigation skills and, and other areas in civil law. I'm asking you to give me your support to be um, the next judge for 192nd, a highly qualified candidate, and I'm asking for your support. Good evening. Isn't it great to be here in the African American Museum to celebrate the holidays? So, I'm Tom Irvin, and I'm running for Dallas County Commissioner District 2. Many of you know I've been out here for the last five years supporting candidates and issues, but I've also got the professional background to be a good steward of the county's resources. So please support me for Dallas County Commissioner District 2, and have a good night. Okay, now we don't have much time. You can give you 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds. I'll be quick. My name is Jay Clayberg. Uh, Jay Clayberg, and I'm running for uh, Texas Land Commissioner. And I grew up in South Texas. Uh, the General Land Office uh, controls about $14 billion in natural disaster relief funds. And so if you're concerned about potential flooding or hurricanes or tornadoes like we saw go through uh, just north of here, the General Land Office matters and it generates about $600 million a year to K-12 through public school education. Jay Clayburn, Land Commissioner, please uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Zachariah Manning, running for U.S. Congress District 30. So I hope, you, hope to have your support, Zachariah Manning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Th
you first of all to the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats for hosting this and having us here tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you. My name is Jane Hope Hamilton, and I am a candidate for U.S. Congress, Congressional District 30. It is wonderful to see so many people in this room tonight who were here in 2006 when we turned the county blue. I am last on the ballot, but as they say, save the best for last. And I am the only candidate in this race that has worked in Congress and served on Capitol Hill. I worked on the U.S. House Rules Committee, and I also worked and I served as Chief of Staff. I am asking for your guidance, your support, and I am asking for your vote. Thank you so much. Hello, happy holidays. I'm Judge Kim Cooks, the judge of the, presi the presiding judge of the 255th Family Court and Protective Order Court. As I've told you before, I'm mending the broken families and making calm solutions for the families. I need your support. Early voting starts February 14th through the 25th and the primary is March 1st. So let me tell you a little bit about my court. I'm in family court and that deals with child support, child custody, divorce, and CPS cases. And as you all know, I believe that children should be with their families, friends, neighbors, church members, anybody but to go into CPS. And I've stood by that and that is the promise that I've given to my community. And also, if you don't have a job and are not able to pay child support, we have a solution for that. We have jobs skills and interview skills and you know have proper etiquette for a job interview and we also send you on job interviews and get you a job because there's no point in you sitting in Dallas County Jail when you can't pay child support and you'll be away from your children. We need you to be productive citizens. I'm Judge Kim Cooks. I need your vote. Show me love February 14th. Our treasure. She said, just name my name and I'll wave. But we want to welcome y'all to come out and join our organization. We need your help. Trey, tell me about uh, what the organization drive is doing and what are we doing? Yeah, we're going to start voter registration drives every Monday. Uh, we're going to do them at the DPS Center in South Dallas as well as the Morning Garden. So if you're interested, just please uh, let me know and we'll definitely get you uh, signed up and uh, to help us. Whether you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, you're Muslim, black folks believe in the Democratic Party. So believe in us, invest in us, and help turn us out. Believe. Thank you, Mr. Chair.